Welcome back, everybody. It's your maternal units podcast of preference, <laughs> the physics study group. Welcome back, everybody. Blue, <laughs> What's going your on? Mama's favorite podcast. Hey. You know what I'm saying? And you might notice we have somebody <laughs> in Blue. dramatic's place today. Blue. <laughs> Where we, we, we beautify the podcast slightly, you know what I mean? We, yeah. we, we, I think we got rid of all the blemishes of the podcast yeah, by yeah. switching out dramatic with. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna let y'all know who that is in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this beautiful young lady right here. But before we get to that, this is Flocka Zulu, aka Baraka Flocka, aka Nicodemus, aka Sir Black Simon the Third, aka Pablo Escovich, aka Gary Indiana Jones, aka No More, aka Stop the Violence. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> That's not a gun, y'all. <laughs> what that a gun. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the grease popping on the pan. Exactly. So it's your boy I seen Black, aka Way Bigsby, aka Black Dynamite, aka Samurai Black, aka Always Bet on What's Black, up? aka Shabby Ranks, aka Broop 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 Shabby Rank Kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was late on the what's up. Yeah, I was I was I was we were all, we're all a little late. We well, drinking on this sauce. Me and I'm saying. It, it's your boy Swiss Harvey Digger. Swiss Harvey Digger. I wasn't done. Swiss Harvey Digger. Swiss Harvey Digger. Uh. <laughs> and with us we have Telly Tell, hey. <laughs> hey. aka Telly for short, was AKA simple. Telly for short, yeah. Simple. Telly, simple. aka yeah. Telly Tells, yes. Thank you for being with us. Oh gosh, thank you for having yeah. me. We yes, appreciate yes. you coming oh. through. Word, word. So, just a little background before we get to well, you know, we'll we'll, we'll get to the, the, the getting the, to. We'll get to the getting to. You know what I'm saying? But we'll, we'll we'll kick off. We'll kick off with this. It is Minority Mental Health Month. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So last month was Mental Health Month. Right? Correct. Right. So this month is Minority Mental Health Month. So what's... um Obviously, like, it, there, there, there was a feeling of, like, we need to make this a special month for us. Mm-hmm. And and where do where you feel that need comes from? Well, here's a fun fact. Uh, Minority Mental Health Month was actually coined in 2008. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I recently just started hearing about, but it's been in place that long. Mm -hmm. And even more shocking, Mental Health Awareness Month was actually started in 1949. Mm. No way. So um, that's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah that's a big and gap. And I feel like lately you're just now starting to hear about people talking more about mental health and mm. so forth and so on. And to know it was shocking for me to find out that minority mental health was started in 2008. That was mm. so long ago where I, I'm just, you know, getting mm. more in depth into it. Mm. And it just kind of shows me that right now the climate in our society has changed. Yes. And we are kind of leaning more towards mental health awareness and mm-hmm. to find out that these things were in place for so long yeah. and we're just now finding out about it, it kind of gives me a little bit of hope to see that it's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, something that's more common. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that definitely expands on the conversation overall as mm-hmm. society um, to see. Yeah. 1949. That is, that's a long time ago. Yeah, that's like, like um, that's 70 years this year, to be honest. Word. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if any of you are the same way, but like I've been feeling like all these, you know, new months or these new celebrations, these new, you know, days mm. have been popping up out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And I honestly would have thought mental health month was a thing that happened within at least the last two decades, right. personally. But it shows you the disparity within that field. For mm-hmm. sure. Because you, you see, like, with certain instances where mental health isn't even discussed in, in um you know, the black culture, but then, mm-hmm. you know, in white America influenza is a thing <laughs> when i found out what influenza was i was the so <laughs> bad, i'm like what i'm like yo so i'm like you could be too spoiled and turn into a maniac <laughs> yeah, basically get, where they you could use that as an excuse mm-hmm. but you literally can't use the opposite like what happens if you're too poor that might make you do some weird shit too yeah but For you sure. know they just lock your ass up in jail but anyway, mm-hmm. let me tuck my 
Rage away. <laughs> Tuck that rage <laughs> back. <laughs> Pablo Escovich. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the violence. Stop <laughs> the violence. Always. Always. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a big deal because um I think mental health personally in gen- uh, I mean in general and like the minority but for us specifically black communities, mm-hmm. Caribbean communities, we don't put an emphasis mm-hmm. on mental health, what it means. There's not much of a conversation throughout the household or the communities of what mental health is mm-hmm. because we just look at life as, you know, like tribulation and trial. And right. so it's either you deal with it or you don't. And right. if you don't, then you're going to sink. If you do, you swim. Yep. And you it's, a, it's a very straight cut forward way of looking at it. Or to throw this out there, a mm-hmm. question to, to each of you, to each of us, I'm going I'm to I'm answer the question myself. What's something you learned? Um, along, you know, just along the journey of life that about yourself that you need to do in order to keep yourself, you know, um, you know, well, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Something that's like, mm-hmm. oh, you realize, like, oh, I'm someone that in, that needs blah, blah, blah in order mm-hmm. to, you know, stay happy, stay yeah. rested mentally and stuff like that. What, what's, what's that? Oh, you <clears> put <throat> me on the spot. Oh, oh, you on the spot. I bro. can go first. Uh, I got, to. I got an answer, teacher. No. <laughs> 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 oh, if you want to go first, you are definitely. So <laughs> I would say for me, first. simply because I struggle with this a lot. So that's a really excellent question is the, I guess the facade of being perfect. Mm. I want to make sure that I have everything done perfectly. And it could have a lot to do with my sign because I am have a little bit of control mm. here and there. But I feel like I've always wanted to strive mm-hmm. for the best. And it what has a lot to do. Yes. I'm a Virgo. Oh, and I'm a true Virgo. Ah, so <laughs> I've always wanted to make sure that everything is perfect. Mm. So growing up, and it had a lot to do with my rearing as well, mm. I was a perfectionist when it came to school, it came to anything. And now... In my life, I realized that, you know what, perfection is, it's it's not the end all be all. Right, mm-hmm. right. There's going to be some days that mm-hmm. I may, in my mind, fall short of perfection, mm-hmm. but it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I think that realizing that has mm-hmm. decreased a lot of my overall tension mm, right, in trying right. to you know make sure i check off this one thing like mm. make sure i check off all the boxes on my checklist yeah. like if i leave something off it's okay right, like right. and i realized that and that's what i think that i've taken you know as growing up is that if you fall short it's not the end of the world right it's right. it's okay i knew there's no such thing as perfection it's always constant growth exactly and development you know what i mean Maybe perfection would exist in a world where there were constant things that mm-hmm. existed, but nothing is nothing forever. Is, no. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. You know, not being too hard on yourself because you sometimes we create our own anxieties. Mm-hmm. I, I would even uh, absorb that into my answer. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> steal some of that. You can buy right. That's so real. Or um, and more so, just like <clears throat> you know, being honest with mm-hmm. yourself. You know, fully. Like mm-hmm. that's kind of hard. Yeah, you know, to it's easy to say, oh yeah, I've got this, I've got that, but then you when know, you hide something else that's you know, and or holding yourself accountable. But I mean, to answer your question, um, you know, what is something that I you're asking? What is something that we do, mm, do for mental health? Yeah, I, do or something that you've realized that smoke. Know. Baby, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Ganja. Hello. Speaking of which, nah, this is this is a this is a prop weed. <laughs> Word, yes. Same shit they smoked on that uh, Pineapple Express movie. Word, <laughs> yes. That <laughs> nothing but the. <laughs> <laughs> smoke real shit on that movie. <laughs> Word. They don't know that baby. <laughs> Word. No baby. Hey, baby. Word, but that what it do, that, baby? that that is true. A lot of people use like marijuana as like a. Well, that was a joke. That but, was a bad answer. But no, but then I, I I'm glad you brought it oh, up. That was part of it. Because we use we use these things, and sometimes it could be a coping mechanism. Yeah, I was gonna say that they use it as a coping mechanism to mm-hmm. not have to deal mm-hmm. with the upfront issues. Exactly. Because as you know, it changes <coughs> your state of mind. One thing, it is everyone's body takes to it differently, but typically mm-hmm. it calms you down or mm-hmm. it yeah. makes you like, you know, not worry about your problems. And a lot of people, mm-hmm. they have gotten so accustomed to that state <coughs> yeah. that they utilize it as a coping mechanism so mm-hmm. that they don't have to be worried or stressed mm-hmm. out. And they mm-hmm. know that when they're high or in, their, they're in that state of mind mm-hmm. that everything's okay. They don't have to 
mm-hmm. worry about their problems in the forefront. So it right. can't. It's definitely is used as a coping method. I was, for sure. I would definitely yeah. piggyback on that because I can say it personally since we're talking about being honest with ourselves, transparent. No, mm-hmm. <laughs> but in all honesty, I think we all can find uh, something in our lives that we may be indulging too much. For sure. You mm-hmm. know, too much of a good thing. Right. Um, to where we don't because balance is <laughs> really. <Thank you>. <laughs> A foul owl with the bathtub. Word. Shout out. Get the tub in here. It's not a bathtub. Mm-hmm. So, the, the, whew, I lost myself. Hold up. <laughs> yeah. That's where we soak our thoughts. In the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> but can it be used no. in a positive light? Yeah. So, the, the, all right. So, the point I was making was yeah, some people will go and overindulge. And that's where. You got to decide what is too much for you. Exactly. Um, and because then it can start to overflow and affect other areas and people in your life. Word. And that's where being a responsible human being, adult, comes into play with, you know, taking advantage of substances that alter your uh, consciousness. Message. I think um, people. I should be do 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 I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I guess to bring it back around and properly answer your question. Um, you know, aside from using, you know, things like cannabis, which is more of an, a, a something to inject you into that state of like, I think cannabis, I guess I'm going to make this point first. I think cannabis puts you in a, a state of mind that for most people allows you to immediately handle whatever stress and anxiety is in front of you um, in order to continue moving. And that's what the W's like to call micro dosing. <laughs> when you use a certain small amount mm-hmm. in order to, you know, deal with the day or, you know, whatever you see coming in front of you, what you have planned for the day. So um, I think that may be a healthier way of using it. But that's mm-hmm. besides the point, I guess, as far as uh, because I didn't do that enough. <laughs> but as far as uh, mental health goes, I think me personally, uh, I would try to, I try to pay attention to my what our parents would call hobbies <laughs> you know the things mm-hmm. that you know that we're really passionate about mm-hmm. that you may not have been able to realize into something monetary so like mm-hmm. that i might play my guitar but playing the guitar is super therapeutic i suck but mm-hmm. it's super therapeutic mm-hmm. for me you know you once you get a couple songs down mm-hmm. it feels the, the 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 textile feeling of strumming the strings mm-hmm. uh to the auditory stimulation you're getting mm-hmm. uh, to the satisfaction when it sounds right like there's a lot going on there so i think music in general or playing instruments uh, i would count as a as a way of taking care of myself true true i feel that and um i mean to 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 add on your point um with with cannabis I feel like people use a lot of things, you know, For whether sure. it's like a glass of wine at the end of the day mm-hmm. or television Absolutely. or, you know, all these things where you can overindulge in and, you know, but I feel like the, 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 it's all about balance, you know, For sure. you know, and, 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 and if, er, in any, anything you do, but, um, yeah, that so, yin and yang. Exactly. To, but to, to answer my own question for me, it's um solitude. Mm. Like over the years, I realized that like I need like to be alone, like for some time. That's what recharges me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like whether it's just like, me playing video games, reading a book, um, just you know, just generally just vibing yeah. by myself. You know what I mean? Like I feel like that's that that's something. That's needed. That's like your form of self care. Yeah. Like, like that's what you do to mm. kind of reset or recharge your battery. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So self care is really big when it comes to mental health, mm-hmm. and um, self care is not like a cookie cutter type of term. Mm-hmm. It looks different for everyone. Like mm-hmm. my type of self care may be different from your type of self care. It's mm-hmm. basically what allows you to be able to kind of reprogram, mm-hmm. like you know, digress and kind of get yourself back to Mm -hmm. your state of equilibrium so to speak Mm -hmm. so for for example i was going to tell you like playing the guitar that's your Mm self-care you know solitude which solitude is needed to do that i'm telling you like that Mm -hmm. is all different forms of self-care and a lot of times some people they think that self-care is um you know doing something specific or doing something Mm -hmm. that is popular what Mm -hmm. normal people do like a lot of people think like oh well everyone else journals let me journal that's my Mm self-care you may not like to journal that may not be your thing Mm -hmm. you may like to watch mindless television 
and just get, you know, your mind off of your regular day to day. That may be your solitude. Yeah, everyone's yeah. self care is different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely want to, um, if I could piggyback on that a little bit, like that solitude factor of um, the to get deeper on that is to say, ask, getting to know yourself, mm-hmm. searching within. And like, cause if maybe you didn't have something you enjoyed growing up, mm-hmm. you might've just forgot there was something you were into. Mm-hmm. And that solitude you take, maybe just taking some silence to meditate. Mm-hmm. Like I started doing this very recently. Very I did it as a kid. Yeah, mm-hmm. I did it in like martial arts when I was a kid, but mm-hmm. I haven't done that in this meditating in so many, not sitting down mm-hmm. Indian style. Oh man, that's that's not the right way to say that Native now, right? American. Legs crossed. Native American <laughs> style, baby. This is your land. Anyway. <laughs> indigenous style. Indigenous, uh, indigenous style. I like that. Chris. I said indigenous style, you know, hands on my lap. I didn't do it. You know, I just kind of was relaxed, kept my posture straight yeah. and I start. you listen to your breath yeah. mm-hmm. and then you try to, li- you li- try to hear your heartbeat. Mm-hmm. And if you do that for five minutes, you can learn so much about yourself mm-hmm. and get going through the week. Mm-hmm. And um, but that just I guess to give a tip to people who yeah. may not know themselves or, you know, are trying things or doing a lot of things and are busy, but mm-hmm. don't feel like that busyness is fulfilling them. Mm-hmm. Take a moment and just be still and quiet mm-hmm. and you, it might help you find within. You know what I find mm-hmm. that's important is that how you start the day. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Like True. You, you, you do that. You take that time to send yourself in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you start the day off. Like I've, I've noticed for myself, I start the day off wrong. It, it's a it's a trickle down effect. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Like I can I can definitely say like one point in my when I realize that how you start off your day really de- determines your day. Mm-hmm. For example, I remember when I used to work at another place and I would listen to a certain genre of mm-hmm. music. And mm-hmm. when I listened to that particular genre of music, like mm-hmm. I was on edge. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, you know what, N- you know, like very like, you know, if anyone messes with me, such, such mm-hmm. and such. But then if I listen to another genre of music, mm-hmm. I was like the happiest butterfly mm-hmm. in the world. And I realized that I had to check myself. I said, you know what, I can't listen to Vibes Cartel every day on my mm-hmm. way to work. Like I can't right, right, right. because it always made me feel like, you know what, I'm in a business where nobody offers to, like, it well, really well, puts it in front of you. It, yeah. it does. And yeah. it's it's as subtle as you think as your commute to work, mm-hmm. listening to a certain genre. Mm-hmm. Starting off your day really, really pans out how your day is going to go. Yeah. So I kind of try to, I try to, if I wake up early enough, I'll be transparent. I don't do it every day, but I try to journal in the morning mm-hmm. once I'm drinking my tea. And mm-hmm. I do it like when no one is awake in the house, and mm-hmm. that I've noticed the days that I do do that, mm-hmm. I have an easier, a easier day, yeah, a much easier day, comparison to just waking up and just like jumping in the shower, you mm-hmm. know, getting things together. When you kind of have a routine, mm-hmm. things work a little smoother for you. Yeah, man. Certain things get in the way, cause like, you know, certain what I've realized with my in myself, like certain reactions that I have. I have to check myself. I'm like, is this my ego reacting? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Is this my pride? You know, which is, you know, hand in hand type type thing. Very introspective. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Am I doing this out of anger? Am I being petty? You know what I'm saying? A lot of things it's like before I react to where it's like I wouldn't have these thoughts before. I would just react or do the thing. I would send that text. I would, you know, say that thing on social media i'd punch that guy in the face you know what I'm saying? Yeah. just based on just made pure emotion you know? yeah, yeah, doing, yeah doing what felt i needed in that moment but not really but you got to be careful when you're a black man on these streets man black for sure man. or a black woman or a black woman <laughs> black people <laughs> black people <laughs> Careful. Be careful in these streets. <laughs> <laughs> like, aside from making a podcast, our goal is to make a platinum record. Like, you gotta platinum Barbie record. Right? Your word. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta <laughs> forgive us for breaking out yeah. a song yeah. every for, once in a while. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every twice in 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 so long. But um, even um, a big part of 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 that in our in our community is is our sexuality. Mm-hmm. For sure. And um, you know, one of the things that you you're you know delving into mm-hmm. is, is is um is 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 um sexual psychology. Well, I am aspiring to become 
a sex therapist. Right, right. So I'm currently a licensed clinical social worker, which gives me the capability Mm. to do psychotherapy. So I can Mm. perform individual therapy one-on-one. However, it's always good whenever you are a therapist or you do perform therapy to have what's called your niche. Mm. And that you know what a niche is right. basically like your what you're known for. Right. Right, right. And um, when I was doing my when I was in graduate school, I had taken up a sex therapy class and absolutely fell in love with it. Mm-hmm. So that is my my next project to right. go ahead and actually get certified for sure mm-hmm. with um, sex therapy to be able to perform that. Right, right. So you know, oh, <laughs> my, my, my bad. Well, I was just gonna ask, like, could you give us like a general like idea of what a sex therapist is or what sex therapy is in yeah general. i can so a lot of people when they hear the term sex therapist they mm-hmm. think oh you're just going to talk about sex all the time and a lot of people don't realize that sex is not just the act of intercourse mm-hmm. there's um a lot to do with like intimacy like you can have a lot of intimacy without actual intercourse mm-hmm. so sex therapy kind of piggybacks on you know it's normally when you do sex therapy it's typically couples therapy Mm -hmm. um so you know you want to make sure that you are well versed in talking to couples or like marriage and family therapy things like that but it's basically like trying to help other individuals work through any blockages Mm -hmm. that they have because as we know sex is not just black and white yeah Mm -hmm. there's so many different components that are a part of it so a sex therapist pretty much helps other individuals work through whatever those blockages are, whether it's the blockages with in themselves or if it's individual and it's going off of some like past trauma mm-hmm. that you want to, you know, process, things like that. Um, you know, also helping people, couples probably primarily work together to improve their sex lives. Mm-hmm. So it, it can be a, a plethora of different things. Okay. So for you nasty people out there who are doing <laughs> something you, else. You pretty much took all she said and just threw it out the window. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I it, definitely you, did. It was like, it's not all about air in the chorus. Here's why. Very, very next sentence. For you nasty motherfuckers. No, I'm saying for you nasty people who <laughs> thought it was oh, my bad. something else. <laughs> See, you one of the nasty people. <laughs> I am. I am. My bad. like, ooh, sex therapy. Because the, mom- <laughs> the moment I found out that, I'm like, yeah, let's get into the nasty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a little bit of that, but it's, it's just, it's, it's more, more broad. Yeah, right, I, right. That's actually what I thought, because um, um, with my degree in a, in a therapy area, like, and I'm not gonna say my degree, y'all, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I did think about it. I'm like, you no, know, shoot, I never thought of a sex therapist, mm-hmm. and I clearly live under a rock, mm-hmm. but, you know, I did think, you know, this might be something that would help someone who has issues with yeah. sex, who doesn't know how to express themselves sexually, because mm-hmm. it is a form of expression, too, mm-hmm. and, um, yeah. Yeah, no, when I took the course, we learned about everything. There was nothing that was, like, held out. So mm-hmm. not even just, you know, heterosexual. We learned a lot about other, you know, genders mm-hmm. and how they probably may transition and things like that. You learn about everything. You, you learn about BDSM. You learn about, you know, fetishes, kinks. You learn about all oh, of that. How uncomfortable mm-hmm. does it get in the classroom when um, that comes up? <laughs> when I, I will not lie. That was my absolute favorite class of undergrad. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. No, of graduate school. My favorite class. Absolute favorite class. Sounds very interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Favorite class. Because when you talk, you're talking about BDSM and all that, like that's, those are taboo conversations, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so to be someone who's versed in that and understand that, and, you know, that's, that's a, that's an asset for sure. What, what are some things you wish we as a community would stop like saying or like our things that are, <laughs> Like, how? Let me. I'm. I'm. I'm probably not framing the question right. Okay, take your time. Like, what are some aspects, or some mentalities in our community that you wish, that that you think are holding us back? As a whole. As a whole, like in terms of in terms of that, like sexuality, stuff like that. I think that a lot of times you're fine. A lot of times people are so engrossed. Mm -hmm. in the perception of how they're going to be perceived. Mm -hmm. You know? Right, right. I would love for people to be able to just be themselves, whether it's 
alone mm -hmm. or with a partner mm -hmm. or, you know, a group of people because, you know, mm -hmm. group sex is a big thing now, too. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if we could just let go the self shame, right? because it's not yeah. just shame when you're with, let's say, for example, you want to try something new with your partner mm -hmm. and you don't know how your partner is going to perceive it. So you have shame behind that. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't just go that far. It could be like you have shame mm -hmm. behind yourself. There's a lot of people who they may, you know, watch porn or masturbate and mm -hmm. they based on how they were reared or how they grew up, they have a lot of shame in that as well. Mm -hmm. I would love for people to let go of that, let go of shame, mm -hmm. no matter in what avenue it is, whether it's self, whether it's with a couple, I would love for you just to be able to live in your truth yeah. and identify with what makes you happy because mm -hmm. that goes back to what we were talking about with self-care. Self-care mm -hmm. and self-love go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And you can't really truly love yourself mm -hmm. if you're not being your greatest self. True. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that would be, if to answer your question, I would be to, I would say to let go of certain shameful thoughts, ideas, ideations that mm. hold you back from being your true self. Mm. And my very ignorant spin on that will be like, if you nasty, fuck it, be nasty. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> that's, not, <laughs> that's not ignorant. At all. I'm telling therapist. you. <laughs> a lot, and you know what's crazy? A lot of times, what you may think is nasty mm -hmm. is like basic to other people. Yeah, word, I'm word. Telling you, it's, it's basic. Like word. you'd be like, oh, that's it. Like that's what <laughs> you word. You, like, you, yeah. you, you yeah. like, yeah, like, what's something you ever want to try? Like, you'd be like, oh, what? Yeah, no. I, I, um, like, bite your nails. Everybody um, look a little booty, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I was gonna say. What were you gonna say? Look booty. <laughs> <laughs> No, definitely. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> no, wait, to our, our, our viewers in Bangladesh. But you know <laughs> what doesn't have a booty? Mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> wait, before before we before we get there, because I feel like this is fate. Yeah, this is <laughs> that this that this happened. I was trying to bring this up last episode. Okay. <laughs> These niggas low key laughed at me when I brought this up. See, uh, they shamed you a little bit. A, sh a little bit of shame. <laughs> I didn't shame you. They're, they're like, why do you why do you even know about this? I'm like, look, I'm trying to look out for everybody. Okay. Semen retention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speak on it. So okay, well, I would like to know what, what what's your definition of it? Like, what what did you try to bring up that they shamed you for? Give me a little bit of background. All right. So what I've what I've read upon, you know, on it and, and seeing is that. Basically, um, men have a tendency nowadays to e either through masturbation or through sex, just like expel, you know, um, their their seed mm -hmm. um, like every day rapidly. Mm -hmm. Ejaculate. Ejaculate, you know yeah. what I mean? And there's... <laughs> expel their seed. Expel their seed. <laughs> that was a good word. Really word. Deep, word. Like, super deep. Super like, you, deep. like you read in James. Mm -hmm. You expel his seed. Um... <laughs> But um, what I'm hearing is that there's value in 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 not doing so yeah so often and and keeping that you know what I'm saying and and you know not just doing so without cause you know what I mean yeah so there's so, another term for it mm -hmm. um semen retention is one of the terms but I pretty much know it as edging have mm -hmm. you heard of it yes edging. yeah edging I've heard basically the term, but I never knew you're bringing yourself to the edge. But you're not really going over. Oh, that's where the term really comes from. So you're, you're edging. Yeah, so does it's, edging require you to masturbate? Well, typically it's either through that. masturbation or through intercourse. Huh. Mm -hmm. Now, if we started getting like real complicated when it came to like like tantric, when you're not even being touched, that's kind yeah. of complicated. But pretty much edging mm -hmm. is when you are bringing yourself almost to climax and then stopping whatever the action is, whether it's mm -hmm. masturbation or the um, actual act of intercourse, for 30 seconds or more mm -hmm. to kind of reset it, mm -hmm. and then you continue going until you feel that that feeling again that you're about to climax, and you do the same thing. It's like a repeat. You stop for about 30 seconds or more mm -hmm. prior to continuing until you yourself as the man is mm -hmm. ready to ejaculate. So it kind of, one, it gives you the power. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it allows you to be able... because. <laughs> uh, I guess Siri <laughs> don't know what semen retention Siri is. Yeah. Siri, like, Siri, Siri was like, excuse me, say what? <laughs> Mind your business, bro. Yo, that was uh, super important for me. Word. Them alphabet boys. 
it also <laughs> allows you to be able to fully I, I'm talking about from a man's perspective mm-hmm. fully identify with the female mm-hmm. because a lot of times sex can be male dominated don't mm-hmm. get me wrong but it can't be mm-hmm. it can't be male dominated and a lot of times people look at sex as the end point is when the man comes there's mm-hmm. a lot of times when a woman does not come or mm-hmm. orgasm or mm-hmm. feel the ultimate pleasure at mm-hmm. all yeah. so and some point people drives that exactly yeah. so some people they practice edging mm-hmm. um to make sure that the woman is ultimately fulfilled. Mm. That's one of the reasons. Secondly, um, just being able to know you're in control of your body mm. gives you a different like kind of self-worth. Right. Yeah. So that's like another reason for, for edging. And then also what I've read, which I thought was really cool, mm-hmm. I read that when a man ejaculates, that your body is actually tra- that's when your body transmits the energy mm-hmm. so that energy is actually being transmitted from you to the to your partner mm-hmm. and you know sometimes once you you can tell me better than i can answer <laughs> but when you ejaculate a lot of times you feel tired yeah. or you feel drained mm-hmm. or you feel like something has been taken from you oh, yeah. when you do and you practice semen retention or edging you don't get that feeling. Right. Mm-hmm. You're able to continue to go for, you know, rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds. Mm. And it puts you more. <laughs> 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 what are we talking about hey. here, baby? Hey, nigga, take a seat, bro. It you puts ba- you, you more to... in control of your body. <laughs> Boy, about to learn some. <laughs> About to learn some shit, bro. Pay attention. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's just a couple of the the benefits of semen retention and mm-hmm. and edging. It's definitely something that's not widely talked about, mm-hmm. but it's it's deep. Like once you get to the point <laughs> that a, you can master it, mm. it's like you live in a whole new life. Yeah. What What sure. about um, <clears throat> keeping that for like I mean like days or you know even like weeks at a time, like not. Ex, you know, not Edging ejacul- that much? No, or not ejaculating for that <laughs> oh. long. Because I've heard there's benefits of up for that too. Yeah. yeah, like you, you're able to. The main benefit that I've heard of that is that you're able to keep your energy up, mm-hmm. and then you're able to keep the their energetic purposes or, you know, your soul is Mm -hmm. intact or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you're more focused Mm -hmm. because as you said, when you do ejaculate, you like, it's like you're drained. Mm -hmm. So you're able to keep your energy up and you're, you're, it's always a good feeling to be in control of your body. Mm -hmm. So when you feel like you are able to accomplish a feat, because in the beginning, I'm sure it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It takes a couple of of chances Mm -hmm. because, you know, when you're doing it, you're like, you know, I just want to ejaculate. Mm -hmm. But once you're able to accomplish that, it Mm -hmm. gives you like a, like, I want to say like superpowers Mm -hmm. in a sense. Right. And I'm going to be, you know, for the the sake of, you know what I mean, uh, uh, you know, the benefit of our listeners, I'm going to be transparent, you know, and this goes back to how we start our oh, mornings Jesus. and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, we're going to take prepare it. Prepare yourselves. Prepare, yeah, cover your ears. prepare yourself for transparency. <laughs> um, like, I, I've I've had a habit of um of 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 jacking off in the morning, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, before I start my day and shit. Mm-hmm. You, know, you wake up morning wood, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, man, you just and, get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Knock it out. Yeah. Knock, yeah. <laughs> Knock it out, exactly. But you know what I've found is like days where I've I've not done that, I've had like more energy throughout the day, and you know what I'm saying, or like I wouldn't be as you know lethargic and stuff like yeah, that yeah. in the morning and shit. So I'm like, ah, there is some benefit so, to yeah, there is some truth to it. It's true. Word, word, word. Mm-hmm. That I I agree with you. The same word. The same. Yeah. But, man. but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Same everything. But, I word. concur. All yeah. those words. But you know, but you know who has these problems but in the ocean. <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> on if on the days where you said you chose not to go and do uh you know the morning wood and everything, mm. you find yourself thinking more about sex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine so because you didn't get to take care of it, it so now you're probably more focused on it. Right. You see a, a, a beautiful young lady walk by and you're mm. like more intense right. than it would be if you got rid of it. But then there's but that benefit. could also be because you're not in a habit of doing it. that not being a priority. Yeah. Right. So it's like you didn't wake up in the day you're for like, five days 
mm. and you didn't beat your meat mm. and but now you're just it's regular right. <laughs> you, know? you, like you wake up with that sexual energy you know yeah what I mean? you do and when you don't but then that could be to the benefit you know yeah. what I mean? because if you're somebody who doesn't normally approach people you know what i'm saying that having that extra you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, hey, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Give yeah. me the that actually yeah. might help. Yeah. 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 It's like, exactly. This is Bill. He jacked off this morning. Mm. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you just you see him the and like, He walks away. Hey, how's it going? He's yeah. like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and this is Jim. He, right. <laughs> he practices semen retention. <laughs> <laughs> Jim walks up. All peppy. <laughs> yeah, he's doing the wave. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jim. Lovely outfit, Brenda. <laughs> this is Jim a month later. Jim knows. <laughs> See that? Jim knows what to say. <laughs> but yeah. Oh god. <laughs> but um <laughs> That might have been a mini TPSG Wildest Tangent. <laughs> yeah. You know I know it. <laughs> Wait, nah, we, you, you was about to give me the Jamaican. My mm. bad. I'm bad. <laughs> you I'm it, you <laughs> Forget where I am sometimes. Word. Word. So, you know, just just to smoothly transition the conversation to to representation and mm. and you know Hollywood <laughs> and bull swagger. You know what I mean? So. Um, a new version of Little Mermaid, a live action. Yeah. Um, Little Mermaid, Mermaid has come out. You know, you see the trend. Aladdin came out. The Lion King coming out. You know what I mean? I it is it me? Sorry to cut myself off. <laughs> like, <laughs> but was that butt joke really good about the mermaid stuff? What what butt joke? <laughs> no, just wanted to message. No. Oh, but I I I'm having an excellent crossfade right now. <laughs> it, like it's oh, like that a, wasn't water. Anyway, so <laughs> the new Little Mermaid has been casted, at, um, and and the actress playing is um Halle Bailey. Yes, yes you got which, it. Which is which is hilarious. Yellow leather. <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious to me. I'm like, oh, did she like? Has she been like reared to replace Halle Berry? Like, you know, is it? Mm. The but then you know, apparently, apparently, it's like it's it's a. It's a duo. She's a sister. Yeah. And Chloe. Chloe. A sister and a sister. A sister and a sister. Sister, sister. <laughs> All right. Focus, damn it. Anyway. Got my <laughs> <laughs> now everybody <laughs> sees how different we have come, come to be. be. All right. Damn it. We focus. singing the second theme song. Sister, sister. <laughs> focus. Oh. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. <laughs> We gotta focus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. We're back, <laughs> and we are back. <laughs> you know, you loved it. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yes, but um, yeah, but apparently there's been some backlash, bro. A lot. And and oh, sis, yeah. bro, sis, <laughs> sis, bro. Uh, a tweet I read as I woke up. I think it was Sunday morning. Was Ariel is white and redheaded. This is bullshit. <laughs> Literally. And this person had like several thousand followers. Mm -hmm. And like there were a lot of people agreeing. And I'm like looking at all the profile. This is why I don't mess with Twitter. Right? <laughs> I'm looking at all the profile pages. I'm like, W, W. White people, mm -hmm. white people. <laughs> and then, they made a whole but, Facebook group for it. No way. Did you, you didn't know about that? Mm -hmm. There was a Facebook group. I think. Don't quote me, but I think Facebook had to shut it down. Oh. The 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 title of the Facebook group so was hurt. "Make Ariel White Again." Wow. <laughs> that was the title, and it had four hundred and twenty members in it. That's wow. that's not surprising. No, and, also and they hilarious. were literally like they had these memes. You didn't see it. They had these memes of Ariel with like a piece of fried chicken around her neck. I, I did not see. Swear. See, this is why I stay off Twitter. I'm, I'm telling just being you, angry it, and black. it was intense, bro. <laughs> it was oh, really man. intense. They, they were in in arms. Wow. Some, there were a lot of black people defending that tweet too, in a mm -hmm. very lighthearted way. Like, um, not defending the tweet. Excuse me. They were trying to defuse it. Mm. Um, they were like, you know, snapping back, and mm -hmm. but it overall, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, no, you don't represent us. <laughs> yeah, it's. And it just goes to show you, man, it's just like that that power of and even like 
W's existence in in, in itself mm -hmm. is traumatizing. So like, <laughs> imagine, imagine growing up and everything that comes out that represents you is um, controversial. Yes. yes, you know what I mean. It's, it's like everything, everything. You know, and it, and it's so freaking thing. It's such bullshit. It's like mm -hmm. yo, it's tiring. It's tiring, and it's like you already whitewashed our history. Yep. History, nigga. Mermaids yeah. don't even exist. exist. This. They're fictional hey, characters. Hey, fictional. mermaids are in Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what y'all say. But where's my tinfoil hat? <laughs> but, but yo, you want to say you want to make movies like Gods of Egypt? Mm. Egypt played, played by that exists. White actors. Christian Bale. <laughs> but you mad? This is absurd. We yeah. know that ancient Egypt. Y'all seen the hieroglyphics on the wall, and yeah. no, not the hieroglyphics on the Transformer movie. The hieroglyphics <laughs> <laughs> in actual documentaries, and when you actually go to Egypt, a lot of them are actually dark. Very. The the, the depictions of people are dark. They're black. Word. They're purple. The original Little Mermaid. The original Little Mermaid. Word. It's, it's sad. Oh, oh yeah. The First of all, the, the original, a lot of the, the original stories for these Disney movies are tragic. They are. Yeah. Hercules is horrible. Hercules, Little Mermaid. Hercules like, is awful. Yeah. The end of Little Mermaid, she like dissolves into the sea. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's not great. Thank you, Disney. Hercules was a guy with an anger problem that killed his family and then you get through that. Yeah. He killed little fish. Like, God of War, like with Kratos, mm -hmm. that's like... Hercules' story. Oh, yeah. It's because there's like Norse and Greek. Yeah. I think God of War is Nor Norse. There, there's Gr Roman, Greek, Norse mythology, African mythology, but they don't talk about which a lot which of these. A lot of these other mythologies are borrowed from it, but yep. we ain't going to get into that. Yeah. Yeah. Or are we? This, <laughs> this episode. Tune in. Tune, Tune in. in next time. On yeah. the next time, next time. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> no, but I mean, people. It's Ursula is being played by. Uh, they casted Ursula. Already? I believe I, if I'm not mistaken, according to the View. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if we, if it's wrong, blame. Well, them. I remember they were trying to advocate for like Lizzo to do Ursula, or and then also somewhere else like Monique, they wanted her to do Ursula. So I'm curious to find out who did they actually you know cast. What? My bad, I'm I'm quoting the wrong name. I was thinking Rebel Wilson. Was that her name? Mm -hmm. From uh, Pitch Perfect, mm -hmm. I think that's the one they cast. Who who I'm is um, that, I'm who sorry. is King um Trident? Yeah, what's his name? I don't know. I, don't think I want to know, know who they're gonna yet. cast for Sebastian. Yeah, that's what no. I want to know. Yeah. Who's Pop Sebastian? Popcorn. Yeah. I would love for it to be the Popcorn, but it also said um people were advocating for it to be Michelle Montano too. Yeah, that would actually mm -hmm. be really the, the, yeah. the original Sebastian so um is Trinidadian. Oh, well, exactly. See, yeah, look. he is. It yeah. he is. Um, but yeah, but hear hear me out. Spraga Benz. Mm. I can America don't like yeah. Spraga Benz though. Yeah. Time. Hey, and I, I I don't blame them. His, yeah, yeah. His, he, his music does not age expressive. well. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like even his songs about guys and girls. <laughs> Hunting, hunting, yeah. hunting. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> kind of rapey. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Great DJ. Great. Mm. <laughs> Watch Shotters right now. <laughs> that was my movie. Yo, yeah. that was a movie for the that culture. That was my movie. Top, top three Jamaican movies. <laughs> right now. There's like, but We're going to all name the same three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry. Shatas is like up there for me. Shatas, mm -hmm. third world cop, dance hall queen. Oh, dance hall queen is good too. Mm -hmm. She's, I'm not. <laughs> She's a dance hall queen for life. <laughs> uh, and she's yes, I got him. <laughs> <laughs> <Dynamite. laughs> yes, Paul. Tell it to them. Word. Smile orange. But y'all know yes, about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. <Okay. laughs> I saw Smile Orange at UF, for the, at University of Florida for the first time. Wow. So random. <laughs> anyway, not going to get into that. Exactly. <laughs> but just, you know, one last, I guess, you know, question to kind of bring this all together. Um, mm -hmm. 
what what kind of inspired you to to get into this line of you know profession uh, like was there like a was there an experience was there like a like a seeing a need that that kind of inspired it all right so low key i kind of feel like where i am now has kind of evolved a little bit so i'm going to take you a little bit back mm-hmm. so initially i wanted to always since i was like six i wanted to be a doctor mm-hmm. like that was like tried and true everyone knew that I went to my first college I went to, I went with a psychology major with a pre-med track. I was going to be an OBGYN. Like, Mm -hmm. that was it. And I kind of realized somewhere in my first semester, thank God I didn't realize it at the end, I didn't like blood. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't like blood. I don't like needles like that. So it wasn't really going to work. So I wanted to kind of get the best of both worlds. I wanted to still feel like I was helping people and assisting people and still be able to feel fulfilled Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense so i came back home and decided to become a social worker because you know social workers contrary to the belief we don't take people kids Mm -hmm. we do a lot of other things Mm -hmm. and social workers they help people they one of the primary roles of a social worker is to advocate to assist to link you up with resources to help you in ways that you can't help yourself Mm -hmm. so i always knew i wanted to help people so i went into the field of social work Mm -hmm. with in the back of my mind i wanted to be a medical social worker Mm -hmm. so i I felt like becoming a medical social worker i would still have that medicine portion Mm -hmm. that I wanted when I was initially going to be a doctor Mm -hmm. and still be able to help people. Two birds, Mm -hmm. one stone, right? Mm -hmm. So I got my bachelor's in social work and I decided, I said, you know what? I started working at a hospital and I said, you know, I love this so much. I I literally like, I loved it. I hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go back and do my master's. And I was able to do my master's in an expedited track. I did my master's in nine months, Mm -hmm. got my master's. I said, you know what? This is it medical social work that's what i'm gonna do then i started to delve a little bit because as a master's level social worker you do have the capability to provide what's called supportive counseling Mm -hmm. not necessarily therapy because you're not a therapist Mm -hmm. per se but you can provide supportive counseling okay and i loved it Mm -hmm. i loved being able to one help people when they're down Mm -hmm. two help people when they feel like there's no way Mm -hmm. and this to be able to be helpful in someone else's life. So I decided I was going to go ahead and then embark on the long journey to become a licensed clinical social worker. And once you are a licensed clinical social worker, it's like the heavens open up for you. Mm -hmm. You can literally do anything from private therapy, open up your private practice, Mm -hmm. do anything it's one of one of the highest levels that a social worker can be Mm -hmm. the only other level is to be able to get your doctorate Mm -hmm. and as most people who get their doctorate in social work they want to you know do research or teach Mm -hmm. or something along those lines Mm -hmm. so it kind of evolved for me i was doing the medical social work and i liked it so much but then i realized that there was a disparity Mm -hmm. there were people who patients who i had who would come to me Mm -hmm. but It wasn't just that they needed resources. Mm -hmm. They needed someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stigma behind talking to a therapist. Mm -hmm. It's always perceived that if you talk to a therapist, something's wrong with you. Or you're crazy or something on the line. So I found that in my own field, because I work with a lot of psychologists, I've had patients who would come to talk to me before they would talk to psychologists because I am a social worker oh, wow. mm. and not a psychologist. Right. They would say, I don't want to talk to a psychologist because I'm not crazy. Mm. And that was kind of like the fire that like burned in me mm. because you don't have to be crazy to talk to somebody. Like yeah. everyone needs someone in their corner. Exactly. You know, I'm a firm believer of that. Like we're not put here on this earth to do everything on our own. Right. Like if we were, it would just be us. Everyone would have their own earth. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not like that. It's eclectic. We have people to our disposal. So that kind of made me want to reach out to people more and really break down the stigma against getting 
therapy, so to speak. Right. And I realized I did a lot of self reflection. I looked in like my life that being of a Caribbean descent, oh my God, therapy is like the plague. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like God. you don't you don't go out on the road and talk about your problems. Oh, no, mm. no. no, you pray mm. and that's it. Mm. You keep it inside. And mm. I have that's not nice. only do I I have the, you know, therapy background from my education. My father has been a minister my whole life. So I'm a PK. I'm a pastor's kid. So mm-hmm. you, I grew up in a household where you didn't complain. Mm. You left everything to God. Yeah. And it worked out. And I have been able to self-reflect and see, like, there's nothing wrong with being identifying with a religion or identifying with spirituality and still undergoing therapy. Mm. You know, everyone needs to process something. For sure. mm-hmm. You know? Therapy is not someone who's judging you or telling you what to do. Because in all reality, if you're a true therapist, you realize that you cannot tell the other person on the other side what to do. Right. All you can do is encourage them, mm. give them resources, mm-hmm. give them insight into their decisions, mm. and allow that person to make their own decision. Mm. You're not doing the work for them. Mm. So somewhere along the lines of getting my master's and getting my license finally i just have this fire in me where i'm like you know what i want to break the stigma because talking about your problems is okay Mm -hmm. and even if you because not everyone who goes to therapy has problems you know right Mm -hmm. there's people who go to therapy who are just transitioning you know Mm -hmm. maybe you just graduated and you don't know where you want to go in your life Mm -hmm. or you don't know excuse me what's the next step Mm -hmm. you can just be talking about things to process and get your your way ahead of you in order Mm -hmm. it's not necessary that something's wrong with you and i struggle a lot with the fact that in my caribbean culture Mm -hmm. whenever we think something's wrong with someone we immediately deem them as a madman yeah or that's the term you know something along those lines and Mm -hmm. i grew up with the uncle who was deemed as a madman Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I became an adult and I started realizing he's not. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. not a madman. I was able to identify that's depression mm-hmm. immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for the past 40 years, the whole community mm-hmm. saw him as a madman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, he's not mad. But it's because there's a stigma. If, if you're not normal, if you don't confide to and like conform with what society wants you to be mm-hmm. you're automatically mad yeah mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it shouldn't be like mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. at all and i think that's kind of what made me so passionate right because mm-hmm. i see i see the need exactly you know when when, when your community writes you write you off and then you write yourself off it's, oh. it, it's a it, that that cycle you could see it play out so many places over and over yeah mm-hmm. it's appreciated that someone um who has the ability to go out there actually cares too yeah. that this is because this is something that's needed within the community and uh just like how you wore that shirt what's your shirt say <laughs> you good sis <laughs> you good mental sis health. mental health matters and it's true because a lot of time it really just takes that question mm-hmm. are you okay right mm-hmm. how's your day going you good mm-hmm. a lot of people they're battling so much they just need to hear that you good mm. and you'll be surprised how immediately they'll probably start pouring out right yeah what's going yeah. on with them you know what i'm not good yeah this is what happened to me today mm-hmm. or even that knowledge that somebody cares exactly enough to ask you know and and with that man we we, we need to have you back on yeah, yeah this was great time, yeah. Man. yeah you know what i'm saying we're, we're looking at time <clears> but you know we we got to wrap this one but Thank you. For sure. Tell he sure. tells. Yes, we got a lot of insight for those of you who didn't know what a social worker is, what a yeah, sex therapist is, is, what <laughs> semen retention is, we, and we, now edging, because I learned something new. We we, <laughs> we we went a lot of places. Yeah, yeah, we did. That was great. Word, that was a word, journey. Word. And and with that, let's extraduce ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> and this is Flocka Zulu, aka Baraka Flocka, aka Sir Black Simon the Third, aka Gary and Gary Indiana Jones, aka Pablo Escovich, aka No aka Stop the Violence. Bro, bro. And this is your girl Telly Tells, hey. Telly for short. That's hey. all I got. I'm gonna work on more AKAs. AKA by you the next good time. sis. Right? <laughs> AKA, <laughs> you hey, good sis. AKA you good sis. I like it. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait. 
And it's your boy I seen Black, aka Black Dynamite, aka Way Bixby, aka Shabby Ranks, aka trying to remember all my AKAs, <laughs> aka always bet on Black, aka Samurai Black, aka Afro Thunder, hey. aka <laughs> Swiss Army nigga, hey. Swiss Army hey. nigga, hey. Swiss aka what's Army in this nigga. cup? Hey. Swiss hey. Army nigga, uh, hold the last note. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait. <laughs> Tune in next time. What's up? Boom. Love, peace, and chingers. <laughs>